What is up, guys? Jake from One Hive here with the next Coffee and Clash episode. Um, real quick before we get started, uh, if this seems a little bit washed out, the color of this video, I am still playing with it. Uh, people had told me that on one of the previous videos, and this was recorded earlier before I got that uh, sort of note. Uh, so I am working on it, uh, but sort of excuse this one. Uh, it, it was recorded before I started adjusting that. I will continue to adjust it, try to get it perfect for you guys. Uh, the first question comes to us. Oh, before we get even going on that, I guess we should say, uh, as always, leave comments, leave questions in the, in the comment section of this video for the next Coffee and Clash. I won't be responding to these, but obviously I will read them all and pick some for the next one. So be sure to leave comments and questions. Uh, from Nathan, uh, how is that? Houghton? Houghton? Uh, hey, Jake, how do you go about criticizing a clanmate's attack? Um, we don't criticize, I guess is the answer. Uh, you want to give constructive criticism, but you're, it's not in a way that you're saying, hey, dude, that was a terrible attack or something like that. Um, we, t we take attacking seriously, and so we, there's not even much like, you know, ribbing each other about a bad attack. It's, it's just, hey, you know, queen was too early or too late or, or, you know, didn't create your funnel or, you know, your deployment was a little bit slow on your hogs or whatever. It's just telling people what, you know, could have been done better in a constructive way. Uh, you don't want to criticize. You don't want to tell someone that they're, you know, they're bad or that, God, that was terrible. You know, because when, when you when you get done with a failed attack, you feel bad enough as it is. You really don't need someone telling you uh, how awful it was. The, the, People at one half already know when they have a bad attack. So we really don't criticize. We try to just advise them on what they could have done differently. If they don't already know, a lot of times people will come out of an attack and say, man, I screwed this up. They already know what they did wrong. Uh, so sometimes it, it works out that way. Uh, from Diesel Vale, hey, Jake, I see a lot of former one half players in other top four clans, and I know top players are hard to come by. Does it affect morale when good players leave for the other clans? And what, they, and what are your thoughts on long-standing members doing this, yeah, it sucks. Um, you know, you never, you never want to lose a, a, a good player, and they are hard to come by. And we do have a lot of good guys that are in other top clans. Uh, you know, some of them that we we had for a long time, and and it's not fun to lose those. But we don't let it get, you know, morale. No, it doesn't get morale down because we know that there's a, a line out the door around the block to come in and prove uh, that they're good enough to be in one hive. So they are replaceable. Nobody is not replaceable. I'm replaceable. Uh, any of our leaders, any of our best attackers are replaceable. It sucks. We don't want to lose them. Uh, you know, we've lost people for a variety of reasons. Uh, sometimes they're just ready for a change of scenery, and that's fine. You know, it's a game. If you're not having fun, it's time to move on. Uh, but no, it's it's definitely not fun. And, you know, a lot of a lot of the top players out there have spent time in one hive, and we're a little bit proud of that, I guess. You know, we've, we've taught a lot of people, and uh, a lot of people have grown up here and become some of the best attackers in Clash of Clans. All right, moving on. Uh, let's see. We got uh, the Raven. I guess that's what you'd say there, Raven. Uh, do you think that the Wizard is the most versatile troop since 90% of all war attacks implement them? I know because what they do is not very versatile. Uh, you know, to me, a, being a versatile troop means that you are capable of doing more than one thing, and they're really not. Uh, to me, a hog would be a more versatile troop. They're excellent at taking out defenses. They are a wonderful cleanup troop. Uh, wizards are pretty much just good for, they're used in every attack because you have to create that funnel and they are high damage output uh, and you've got to have that especially at the start of a raid or at the end of a raid uh, but to say versatile I really don't think that uh, describes a wizard really well uh, next question is from turn 56 is there a video series that you regret starting or one you abandoned because it didn't work like you had planned um, this might surprise you guys, but the one series that I would say I have any regret of starting would be The Hitchhiker. And not because it's not a good series. I think people like it. I enjoy it. Uh, it but it is by far and away the most difficult for me to maintain for a couple reasons. One, it's such a, 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 so much more time consuming than another video. A recap video, I can sit down, I pick out my attacks, I do them, and I'm done. But when I do a Hitchhiker, obviously, you know, a lot of the guys that, that request to have one are fans of the channel. They're excited for me to be over there. I'm excited. I want to talk with them. I want to do stuff. But that ends up taking hours where, uh, you know, another video might not take that long. And I always feel like I'm rushed. You know, I'm talking to the guys, but I'm like, hey, I've got, you know, I've got another video to do tonight, and I've got to get this one done. So I don't feel like I have enough time to really spend with them and get to know the, the, the people that wanted me there. Uh, so that's, that's a regret in the fact that uh, it just... 
back when I had 2,000 subs, it was easy. It was great. I could go over, spend all the time I wanted to get these attacks, and it worked out well. But now, you know, we're, we, we just broke 60,000 subscribers, and it's just overwhelming, the, the number of requests. And, and I feel bad because I can't get to all of them. Uh, so probably if I had to pick one, that would be it. But good question. Uh, Micah, Big Country LSU. Question for your next vid. With the introduction of the air sweeper, I am noticing people are starting to utilize it more correctly to cover two air defenses and stacking up the air seeking mines. Do you feel this technique is the end of Bill Laloon attacking for three stars? Uh, this is an older question, actually, but uh, this was even before the second air sweeper. I thought it would be a good time to answer it because with the second air sweeper, it's still not the end of Bill Laloon. Bill Laloon is incredibly powerful for someone that knows how to do it and uh, brings a, a well-planned, well-executed attack. Even with the air sweepers, now with the hay spell, you're gonna be seeing that, I think, in a lot of those attacks. Um, just, just no, I don't think it's the end of it by any stretch. I think we will continue to see three stars from Golala. Uh, Brian Horsch, Jake, do you wish you could have upgraded your Valk sooner, would have upgraded your Valk sooner? If yes, where would they fall on your when to upgrade category? Yes, I do, because I think they are a very good troop on certain styles of bases and bases that you are going to run into. Um, I would, if I was a new Town Hall 9, I would get Hogs, Loons, Witches, uh, then probably Valks. Uh, honestly, be even before my Golem, because the Valks, if you have four or five, six Valks, it is actually a substitution for a second Golem. They can tank every bit as good. Uh, they're going to get in there and do the job of that second Golem as far as absorbing damage, especially if you bring a heal spell for them. Uh, so I would place them even above my golem. Sorry, the baby's getting fired up. Uh, even before my golem in that order, uh, if I was doing it all over again. I think they're they're underutilized still. They're getting more popular, and there's, you're, you're seeing a lot more of it. But I still think, uh, you know, just a few Valks sprinkled into attack with, on the right style of base can make a huge difference. Uh, Samuel Wilson, will you accept a sponsorship from an app company where they sponsor you gems to gem your base and do a series like Chief Pat did? Um, you know, this is interesting because when I was just getting started and starting to grow the channel, uh, there was a clanmate that I had that actually, you know, reached out before we ever thought this would get big, uh, reached out to the free my apps or whatever it is and, uh, talked to them about it. They said, yeah, when you get to 2,500 subscribers, uh, you know, get in touch with us and we'll, we'll talk to you. We'll sponsor you. Of course, we got to that point and they did, they did reach out to us and they agreed to sponsor and all this, all the details. I had never actually spoke with them. Uh, but this guy left the clan, and so after that, I thought, well, I, I need to talk to these people. So I called them, talked to a girl, super nice girl. I uh, said, yeah, you know, we'll sponsor you. We'll throw you some uh, gems to, you know, do a video or whatever. And when, you know, you won't make the big bucks until you get to like 20,000 subs. But I literally could not think of a good reason to even need the gems for a video. I mean, what am I going to show you guys that uh, <laughs> that you don't know what you can do with gems? You know what I mean? What, am I going to jam my heroes up? Okay. You all know that that's possible. You know it's something that can be done with just a little bit of money. Uh, I just never saw the value in it for you guys. Obviously, there was value for me, but not for you all. And I, I, as I've always said, I'm just not going to, unless it's something I think benefits you guys, I'm not going to promote it. I just can't do it. I can't live with that. So, uh, no, I, I wouldn't. Uh, Jacob Lundgren. Lund Lundgren. What do you look for in a clan member, i.e. people who want to play hardcore Town Hall 9 wars apply to you? How do you decide who gets in? Um, does region affect the result? I am not on the recruitment team. I'm not a, I don't look at the applications. I don't see them. But what we want is, is clash addicts. You know, guys that are obviously have well-upgraded bases, you know, Town Hall 9s and ups, and that are just active on all the time, wanting to play, uh, wanting to learn, you know, not close minded on, on how things should be done. Uh, just the best way to describe it is a clash addict. And if you're, our guys are pretty good at picking those out from the applications. Uh, they can tell who's really putting the hours in. Uh, Jimmy Shaw, this guy is such a bleep. No one should use these strategies. They are so bad. He misuses the word surgical. You mean precise. Just say precise, dumbass. Jimmy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reread this later. When I've got some time to myself, I'm really going to try to apply your suggestion. So thank you for that. Uh, in your opinion, why has surgical hogs hit such a big usage in high level? Why does this strategy just work, and why is it better than others? Um, in my opinion, the anti-three-star base is the reason surgical hogs are so 
uh, you know, successful right now. These anti-three-star bases are spread out. They're supposed to be spread out because it, it gives a lot more options for traps. You don't know where they're at, but that also separates your damage, your, your defensive capabilities. It puts it in more into sections. And when you can take just enough hogs to eliminate that section, then you're eliminating traps with just that group of hogs. You're eliminating defenses with that, just that group of hogs. And now you can move your focus to the next section where there's a lot of defenses or potential traps. Even if that's a group of hogs, if you deployed six, eight hogs there and they get completely wiped out, but they take out the defensive buildings and trigger the traps in that area, that's a win. You know, and you move on to the next one and you just work your way around the base doing that. Uh, most of the time you'll have a few hogs left over and they'll sort of reinforce the next group. So that's why, in my opinion, why it is sort of uh, really working right now is because it fits the base design that is uh, popular at this moment. Uh, Fletch, Fletch Doig, okay, a couple Coffee and Clash videos ago, we asked about Town Hall 9.5. You mentioned that you would stay there level for, uh, you wouldn't stay that level for long. Why not? You may have addressed before, but uh, what are your feelings about gaming, the matchmaking system, and about what those should be about, about those who take it even further, i.e. defenseless town hall 10s, etc. I currently have a town hall 8 that is suspended building defenses on at town hall 6. I am cheating slash to what degree. If everyone did this game, would not be fun. Thoughts? Yeah, uh, that's what you just said is why. Um, there, I guess there's a fine line out there of what is a smart way to upgrade and then what is, uh, you know, trying to gain this game, the system and gain an unfair advantage. To me, Obviously, 9.5 is the smart way to upgrade, offense before defense. It just makes sense if you think about it logically. Uh, but what stinks is, like you said, defenseless town hall tents, things like that. Then there's no real justification for it. You know that you're simply trying to get the easiest uh, time that you can. Uh, so I guess there's a fine line there. Some people might draw the line uh, before you know, what I would. Uh, that's to each their own. I don't think it's cheating. I think it can get cheap and to a point where you say, okay, uh, this guy's just trying to take the easy way out. He doesn't want a challenge. He wants an easy war. Uh, and I, I'm not the authority of where that line is. Again, my line might be different than yours. But uh, I will spend my time there at 9.5. It just won't be uh, for a real long time. Once I'm able to three-star those early town hall 10s, I'm going to start dropping infernos and moving up. All right, guys, that's it for this Coffee and Clash. Hope you enjoyed it. Please leave me questions for the next one down below. Uh, I love doing these with you guys. It gets a chance to us just talk about whatever's on your mind. Uh, so please continue, and I hope you guys are enjoying it. Until next time, Jake from One Hive reminding you guys to suck less.